Hi everyone, welcome back to my next video. I'm at the Art Rubber Tramp Rendezvous, the RTR. We're having a little seminar and probably, I don't know, 20, 30, 50 people here about YouTube and the gear I use and my thoughts about YouTube and how to have success on it. And Cody's very interested. Uh, you, can, you might hear him whining in the background there. He wants to go home and get off leash. Okay, so I'm just going to talk about, my, first and foremost, about if you're going to start a YouTube channel, and they, we had somebody else here who talked about how to start a YouTube channel, and there's a million videos on how to start a YouTube channel, and just go follow one of the videos, and they'll walk you right through it on screen. That's, that's the way to do that. Uh, answer this question. Why would anybody watch this video? If you can't answer that really well in one, two sentences, you're not going to be a big success because no one's going to watch your video because they don't have a reason to. Are you trying to entertain them? How are you trying to entertain them? Are you funny? Are you goofy? Are you serious? Are you trying to inspire them? Inspire them to do what? How are you going to inspire them? What, are they, what do you want them to do? Are you just going to dazzle them with your personality? Well, you better have a pretty good personality. <laughs> They're not going to be dazzled. Now, there's some guys that just are dazzling, and those guys are the big time guys. So you need to be able to say, why is someone going to watch this video? And you need to ask yourself, why am I making this video? What do I want to accomplish? And if you don't have a why, you're going to flounder around and it's probably not going to go anywhere, which describes the vast majority of YouTube channels. So you need to know why anyone would watch and why you're making the video. And if you haven't got a good answer, your readers aren't going to cut your listeners aren't and viewers aren't going to have a good answer when they ask themselves why would I spend my time looking at this video and this guy I have an answer I have a simple answer I'm here to inspire you to consider changing your life and to teach you how to change your life to living on wheels I've got a very simple answer that simple answer motivates every single thing I do uh, it gives me direction and purpose and movement and when a viewer sees that, hopefully every viewer that ever comes to my channel sees and feels that and they instantly can think, well, I'm interested in that. I'm gonna watch. Uh, even if it's not the greatest, most interesting, well shot video in the world, they still may watch. So that's what's most important. Not the quality of the, oh, that's, those things are important. Not the quality of the work, not the quality of the audio. That's all important. But everything is, why should someone watch your video? And it's because you're cool, you better be really, really, really cool. Uh, so I think that's the most important thing that can be said to any new YouTube creator. Know what you're doing. What value are you bringing to the life of your viewer? And you better be bringing some value because their time's important to them and they're not gonna be watching your channel if you're not bringing them value. Making them laugh, making them feel good, making them feel bad, making them feel guilty. If you're making them feel you probably got a viewer, and you may have a subscriber. But if you're not doing nothing, you're not gonna get anybody. So think about what you're trying to accomplish and do that. Yes? The information you gave, the purpose is very good. Uh, what would be the, anything else that you would would give to someone that's, you know, to, to be able to, to have some success on YouTube? Would you, beyond the purpose and obviously the very important things you've told us so far on YouTube. Okay, I'll tell you one more thing. I'll tell you the next thing that I think is critical to your success on YouTube, and that's to be authentic. To be your open, honest self. Don't hide, don't pretend, don't fake. People spot that in a heartbeat. And uh, you're here because I think you saw something authentic in me. And I think that's primarily the reason you're here. Uh, and that's the reason you came back the second time. They were new and creative ideas for you, but. And I think that's true of nearly all the successful uh, YouTubers that you are going and watching. They are authentic. And you're, you know, you're standing in front of a camera. If you've watched, my voice changes when I'm talking in front of the camera. And, and you know, you're, I know there's a camera on, and so I'm speaking to it. And I'm a pretty polished public speaker. I've been doing this a long time now. And all that's true. But I want as much as I can for me to be exposed to you. We are so hungry for an honest human being to make some kind of genuine connection from heart to heart and soul to soul and if you can do that on film on video on YouTube you will probably do really well so don't try 
don't try and dazzle. Well, some people do. That's part of their personality. They are dazzling. And if that is, show it. I mean, that's 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 great. But uh, so have a purpose and a vision and a reason why everyone you should make that video and why they should watch it. And then a, probably just as equally important, be authentic. That's why you love Carolyn. That woman is, I know that woman intimately well. We are good friends. And she is 100% authentic. What you're seeing is her on, uh, on, that, on that screen. And so that's why she succeeded where so many fail. So now I'm gonna just pretty much concentrate on my gear. Uh, uh, more important than video is sound. And, and uh, they, I read about a, an experiment once that a psychologist ran at a kind of university. They created this, an experiment where they had a room, and, and this is a well-known experiment, and they had a TV going and a waiting room, and they had people come in and they said, yeah, well, here's the, here's the clicker, do whatever you need to do with the TV, just sit here and wait, and wait for your appointment. And, and they did it two ways, and they did a, ran a bunch of people through, and they had the, they had the screen go progressively bad, and the audio stayed good. And then they watched people. How will long, and they timed it, how long will they watch a bad screen and good audio? And then they reversed it. And they had a, a great screen and progressively worse audio. The very conclusive evidence was that people will tolerate bad video, but they will not tolerate bad audio. They gotta hear you. So that's one of the very most important things you can do. Now, you can get some great uh, video out of your cell phone. I mean, it's just amazing what these things are doing anymore, isn't it? But people aren't gonna put up with that bad audio. We know that because that's what science tells us. So a key thing in good audio with a cell phone, because it's so tiny, you're not gonna, I'm, this is the microphone I primarily use. It's, uh, this one is a Shure Rode. Uh, this is an expensive microphone. Uh, two to three hundred dollars depends on the model. Uh, you could buy a Rode that would start at a hundred and go up. Uh, they're good microphones. This is called a shotgun. This has its place. I use it a lot. But every bit is important and this you're not going to really use this on your practically on your cell phone. But here's something you can use on your cell phone really easily. This is a lavalier mic. He, he, I never heard anybody say it the right name. We just had another guy here. Well, how, how did he pronounce it? Lavier. 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 That's probably the French. It's French, so he said it the right name, uh, the right way. And I just I'd never heard it before. Uh, and it's basically a lapel mic. That's how you all know it. And I've always called it lavier mic because I know French. Uh, this is a lapel mic. It goes up under your shirt. You clip it on, and and it's just got a simple three and a half inch plug. You all know these. You've all seen these. Uh, and this will go into your cell phone and it's a really weird thing about these little three and a half inch plugs there are two kinds of these little three and a half inch plugs uh, there's a kind that has two little black marks on it and there's another kind that has three little black marks on it see this one has three on one end and two on the other and one of these will work in your cell phone and the other one won't. It's really a weird deal and I'm not, ex it's, it's, one is called, technically called a TRS and the other one is called a TRRS. I don't remember what the initials are for. Uh, and one will work on your cell phone and the other won't. This particular microphone uh, works this way. It came with its own little battery pack and it has a thing, this is an aperture, A-P-U-R-T-U-R, pretty darn good little mic for between 35, 50 bucks, I forget. So it's got a battery in here and, uh, and it's marked in and out. So this would go from here, oh no, this end goes from, end goes from the, the uh, mic itself, see the mic down there at the end, it plugs into the end and then out goes out and you can use either end on the out. And one will go into the three and a half inch port on a DSLR, or most all uh, camcorders will have a, a three and a half inch uh, input. Or the other one will go onto your cell phone. So this particular mic will work on your cell phone or your DSLR. But you gotta get the right one, and if you plug it in and it doesn't work, it's because uh, you got the wrong one, just turn it around. So, and, and this one, 
your cell phone microphone gets its power from the cell phone. It doesn't need a battery. Uh, your cell, your almost always, your your mic from your DSLR needs a battery. And so this one provides it and you get it either way. That's the great thing about this particular mic is it works on both really well. The battery is in here and it's rechargeable. It won't burn out on you. That has AAs in it and I have to watch it really careful. I'm in the middle of a shoot. I'm not looking at it because I'm in front of the camera and then suddenly batteries die and I lost all my sound and I have to reshoot. Uh, this one has rechargeables. I just plug it in. It recharges and every morning when I go out, it's got a new hot battery. I really like that because of that. You know, the sound on all these things, these little cheap mics are amazingly good. I mean, you, you go to Amazon and there's a dozens of these little cheap mics. It's amazing the good quality sound for 10, 20, 30 bucks. Uh, and sure, you can spend a lot of money and it'll sound better, but you're not gonna, on a YouTube video, you're not gonna hear the difference in the quality uh, at this level. And so this is a good setup and you can use it on your DSLR and you can use it on your sound. And, and the big thing is for me, because I shoot almost exclusively outside is the wind. <coughs> You've all heard my videos with the crackling and the wind blowing away and you've all cursed them because good audio is so critical. Your, your, can't, your cell phone will give you a great video, but it will not give you good audio. So just this little bit of help will really improve it. So you get a, um, and oh, and I've got, it comes with a little dead cat, kind of bright. <laughs> That's going to really show up on your video. Uh, but you can buy them in black. And so you can go to Amazon and order uh, little mufflers, wind mufflers for these for these uh, cheap cell phones, uh, these cheap microphones, and I bought a bunch of the black ones because they won't show up as much. Unless you're wearing a white shirt, then it's great. <laughs> but uh, if the wind's coming from this way, of course, you, like, he's, like has been said, you all you never want to shoot uh, into the sun. You want to, you know, the camera should always be here looking at some angle to the sun. And no, just the opposite. You want to always be here uh, looking at, you looking at the sun to some degrees, so you have light on your face. I always shoot outside, so uh, the dead cat on this microphone and the dead cat uh, on the little lav mic. 40 bucks, this is gonna, that's nothing's gonna improve the, your, the quality of your cell, if you're using a cell phone, than a cheap mic. You're gonna really be glad. Yes, sir? How do you decide what microphone to use? If, it's, if you're out, he asks, well, how, how do you decide which uh, microphone you're going to use? This will only pick up me. It's here. If I'm talking to you, it's not gonna pick you up. It's gonna pick me up great. So if there's two of us, I either have to have two of these, and I've only got one input on my cell phone or my DSLR, so I can't use two of these. Or then I'm forced to use, if I'm shooting two people, I'm forced to use the shotgun. We haven't talked about that. This is commonly called a shotgun mic. Uh, this is a Sure, it's a pretty high-end mic. Um, and it's worth it to me to have spent the money. Rhodes is a really good one. My first year, I shot with a $25 shotgun mic. I forget the name. I got amazing video out of it. It's amazing the, the quality of audio you can get out of a $25 mic. It's really, it's really incredible. I don't know how they do it for 25 bucks. Um, but so if, if there's two, if I'm standing here, okay, the camera's on that tripod. You need a tripod. And, uh, and I, I'm standing here interviewing you, I have to use a shotgun because there's two of us. I can't use that. But if there's any wind, if you're Paul possible, if you're just yourself, you want to use a lab. You can set up so you can use two labs, two people. It gets a lot more involved in technical and I'm not going to go into that. You would want to use a, a mixer, a portable mixer. A Zoom is uh, H, Zoom H4 would be a great mixer. The two, the two, uh, the two labs would go into the zoom and from the zoom it's a mixer it takes two sound inputs and then sends them out as one sound put into your camera but they're getting into a lot more technical and we're not going to go that far so audio is critical and this is a cheap way to get it on your cell phone or on um, on your dslr or whatever you're using now a camera again your cell phone is going to do a great job you're not going to go super wide you're certainly not going to zoom in it will do a little bit for you it won't do much um it won't go low light it won't it would actually they shake around pretty well don't they most of them have enough stabilization in them to do pretty good there are a lot of limitations to what you can do with a with a uh, cell phone you might want to i would recommend you upgrade and a great choice 
is a DSLR. This is a DSLR. The key, uh, the key element to a DSLR is a interchangeable lens, and I'll show that to you right now. Lens comes off. Lens goes on. Now I've changed lens. These are high quality lenses. These are not professional lenses, but they're pretty high quality Canon lens. Uh, and so these are really good lenses. Uh, that lens is fairly long, so I can zoom in. If I wanted to zoom in on the lady in the very back, I can zoom in to just her head and shoulders with this other lens. This, video, this lens is super wide. If I took a shot with it, it's out there. Well, it's not there. It's probably out there. It's probably really, really wide, and I'd get you all in, and you'd be all very small. This is a critical lens for me because I'm inside a van, and I'm showing a person and her whole van, and i got to get wide. So for me, the ability to get a super wide angle was critical because you're not going to get the whole van in any other way. Uh, and I'm, that's my, what I do. I'm talking about living in vans and cars and SU, on our SUVs and, and RVs. When I'm going inside to show one off, I want to build you to be able to see it and a super wide angle. This is a $279 lens made by Canon. This is a Canon camera and it's remarkably good for $279. Uh, the camera is a uh, Canon SL2. It's what I'm going to recommend to you and I'm going to tell you why I recommend it, or if you want a different camera, what you should look for. The features that I consider essential in a camera, uh, I'll just tell you what I think is essential. The first thing that is essential is an input, a three and a half inch uh, input. That'll hook you up an external mic. You gotta get an external mic because audio is critical. It's all important. And these have little crappy speakers in them and you're going to get crappy sound out of a crappy speaker and if there's any wind it's going to be super crappy and so you want to get an external mic and it's got to have an external mic port uh, i shoot with another camera a lot it's the canon gx7 that's on the tripod it's a little camera it always fits i should have taken that off it always fits in this bag i always have a camera with me i don't have it with me on not now because it's on that tripod but i got a little bag right here and that camera fits in here and I always have a camera. I can pull that baby out and, and, and shoot a video at any time I have the inspiration hits. And I can shot, shoot a clip and add that in and make that a whole video or I can add it to another video. The next thing that I consider essential is a flip out screen. I flipped out the screen. The screen flips around. And now I'm shooting a selfie. I'm, I'm looking at the screen of myself. I don't have to guess if I'm in the, in the shot. I can also hold it above my head. Can you see that? So now it's way up here. I can get a high angle shot of everyone and I know what I'm seeing. Is it level? Well, le off level video is not a good thing. Is it level? I can also get down low. I can put it right down here and get low, I can get within a couple of inches of the ground and see the screen and know what I'm doing. Flip out screen is essential. I wouldn't buy a video camera for vlogging uh, or for YouTube without it. So the next thing that I consider essential is a little technical and I'm not going to get technical on exposure because it's a really complicated subject, but the minimum I expect out of a camera is exposed easy while I'm shooting exposure compensation and and you've all seen I've shot videos a lot of videos like this I'm in a guy's van he's standing in front of a window and the windows are there I'm, and I'm they're just there and the, the window I, is perfectly exposed and his face is black you've, I've shot those videos you've, if you've watched my videos you've seen some of them well that's not an interesting video you want to see the person not the window uh, exposure compensation you push a button, and then on this camera, and that's why I'm recommending this camera to you, I, I, I really recommend a touch screen that you touch the button in the middle, and then on this camera, on either end is a plus and a minus button. 
So if I look through the screen and I say his face is black and that's a really boring video, I can tap the plus button. Uh, and so a, a on-screen exposure compensation where I can raise and lower and just look at it. It looks too bright, turn it down. It looks too dark, turn it up, plus minus. It's just that simple. Anyone here can do what I've just described. And this camera has that right on screen. I can use it at any time while I'm videoing. Your videos will be improved because you're, you're not going to be overexposed or blown out or, uh, or too dark and your people's faces in shadow. Really important. Uh, autofocus. You're a one-man band, aren't you? Mm -hmm. You know, you don't, you have any, has anybody here hired a film crew to follow them around in video? <laughs> you're a one-man band. So you got to have autofocus because you can't, you're going to be in front of the camera talking the camera's here, and when you hit on autofocus, it's got to focus on you and stay there. And I've got a lot of out-of-focus videos where the crazy camera would not focus on it. And when I'm interviewing you and talking to you, I'm concentrating on you and not the screen. So when I, now this has a touch screen, and I tap the person, and I've got it in face, facial mode, it follows the face. It, it has softness. There's a little computer in here. These things are just little computers. And the computer knows to follow a face that sees two eyes and nose and a mouth and it follows it. And that, that face stays in focus. So I put this on a tripod, I walk around front, front and I know that person and I are going to be in focus all the time. So if you want your best audio and video, you need exposure compensation on the screen. You need it to auto focus and follow you. And this can, and easily, you tap it, it focuses. You don't manually focus the anything. You don't have to hope. I'm, I sure hope that thing's focused. It will walk on the person's face and it will stay on the person's face. And that's what you gotta have. And I got a lot of videos up with the person out of focus and that's exactly why, and that's why I don't use that camera anymore because it, the autofocus was is poor. Uh, and I got a camera, Canon, they have a new the system out now. It's in numerous cameras that it's autofocus with facial recognition is superb. Works really well. So this camera offers me everything I need. I'm getting good exposure with just a tap, two taps, and I got the right exposure. It gives me great autofocus. It gives me great sound because I hooked up a, a real solid mon uh, <coughs> microphone to it. And that's the essentials and the screen turns. So this camera is also the smallest DSLR made. It's there's a Nikon 3400, uh, which is very close to the same size, but it lacks the turning, the flip out screen. It lacks the, the autofocus. It lacks the easy, it's, it's just not a camera. I wouldn't recommend it to anyone. Although it's very, and Nikon makes great cameras. It's just not a good video, vlogging video camera. This is the best vlogging camera made to the best of my knowledge. It's what I would recommend if you've decided to move up, you're gonna get serious, you're gonna get a camera That'll give you what you want, and this will do it. But don't do that until you know exactly why you're making videos and exactly why people should watch it, because you're just throwing money away on the camera. It's a great camera. It's a great still camera. You'd never regret owning this camera. It's also one of the cheapest on the market. I paid $650 for this with a kit lens, and I paid $279 for the super wide angle lens. And I, this was a very expensive camera uh, microphone. I paid 300 for this microphone. They have the exact same model without all, some of the features for 200. Uh, you could buy a $25 mic that'll do an amazing, amazing job. So that's basically what I have to say. Those are the features. Whatever camera you buy, that's what you want. Really good autofocus. Uh, really good, uh, easy exposure compensation. Uh, turn out, twist out screen, and the ability to plug in a. Uh, uh, microphone. Now, on the tripod, because I had to film this with something, is a GX, Canon GX7, which fits in my little thing. I can always have it with me. And it has almost everything I want. It has the flip-out screen. It has the exact same uh, autofocus system, so that's great. It has the exact same exposure compensation. It does not have a mic input. Small cameras, none of the small cameras, to the best of my knowledge, that will fit in a pocket or in a little tiny bag have a uh, microphone input and that just that just cripples the camera to my mind. I use it a lot, I use it for b-roll, I just recognize the audio quality is going to be, be mediocre at best. Uh, and that's okay, it, I, 
better mediocre than nothing sometimes and I love that camera and carry it with me when if they would put a microphone jack on it it would be the ideal vlogging camera because it's so small so light and it has all the great features uh, one more thing that is really valuable is a headphone jack because you don't know what kind of sound you're getting without a headphone going on and this <coughs> none of the cheap cameras have headphone jacks this one does not it's a sacrifice but it's one you just have to make I recommend the Canon SL2 either a good or, or even a cheap microphone uh, uh, shotgun mic this is a shotgun mic it goes up mounts to the top of the camera and it focuses the beam in front of it and it and a good one uh, will focus the beam in front of it and narrow it all the way around to the side is a focused front beam uh, so I do recommend a good uh, shotgun mic. So I'll take some questions. Yeah. What is what size is the, the wide angle lens? Uh, this technically is a 10 to 18 millimeter. Whoa. 10 to 18, and uh, you got to consider the crop factor. You want to know what that means? It's technical. Uh, every inside every digital camera is a little tiny chip, and all it does is gather light and turns the light into zeros and ones. That's what it does, that's its existence. The size of that chip determines much of the quality you're capable of getting out of the uh, camera. Uh, your cell phone has a chip in it smaller than your little finger, your fingernail, little finger fingernail. Uh, this one has one about the size, about a third of this, about two thirds of the size of a postage stamp. A full frame camera has one about the size of a postage stamp. And the bigger the frame, the, the uh, sensor size, the better the quality. But you know what, 1080p on YouTube, it doesn't really matter. That's why your your uh, cell phone camera takes such great pictures, with, with, even with a little tiny chip. Because on YouTube, you watch a YouTube video on a, on a cell phone, none of that stuff really matters. It's not gonna, you're not gonna see it. Uh, yes, that's 10 to 18 millimeter, and for a crop camera, that is uh, a super wide. Yeah. Yes, sir. Uh, do they have an image stabil stabilization system? Excellent question. Mm -hmm. Canon messed up with their DSLRs. They missed the boat entirely. They have one in the lens. All my lenses are in are, are image stabilized. They have not put them in any of their DSLRs, and they're missing the boat. They're really because they want to sell them to you in the lens, and uh, they're really missing the boat. There, uh, so it does no. The answer is it does not. Okay, well, let me address uh, another question before it, it might come up. If you've heard of uh, mirrorless cameras, it's an entirely different. It's not entirely different. Mostly they use the same chip, the, the uh, sensor, uh, but it it doesn't. I, I'm not going to try and explain it to you. It's a little complicated. But the bottom line is they're much smaller. They tend to be and and lighter that's really their only advantage and you don't get to look through them you get to look through them. it's complicated and i have a uh i have a panasonic g85 which is one of the better mirrorless cameras uh and i have it and i won't bring it out to shoot with it and there's two faults that i find with most of the mirrorless cameras uh most of their autofocus is poor my the, the autofocus on my can panasonic g85 was just piss poor this is the current model you go buy it today um the panasonic makes what's called the gh5 and and now they have a gh5s and they're coming out with a g9 and they are some of the most uh highly regarded of all the video cameras and uh casey neistat if you have any idea who that is just through, got rid of his gh5 for these two reasons Piss poor autofocus and overheating. My G85 would overheat in about half an hour and just shut off. Uh, they're tiny, they're much smaller cameras and they are doing a lot of computing power because they have just a screen and not a viewfinder. And, I, and, and my G85 would just, 30 minutes and it was shutting down because it was too hot. I can't have that in a camera. And uh, autofocus was really poor. I got, autofocus was really poor. I've got a lot of uh, bad focus, from that G85, and I, what it does do really well is uh, time lapse, really, really good time lapse. And neither of those problems exist with the time lapse, so that's all I use. Uh, I would recommend any of the Panasonic cameras for you for those reasons. They're more expensive. It's much more expensive than this camera, and the, the, the critical features don't work as well. Although it has a million other features that you won't care about. This is the perfect vlogging camera. I can speak for it that it works superbly well, and. 
Canon is famous for its color. Uh, they have, you, you, whoever you talk to, they will admit, Canon is famous for its color science. And so it has, not only does it have everything else going for it, it has that going for it. Okay, what else? Yes? Uh, what kind of software, editing software do you do? I don't do anything fancy because I'm not a very smart guy. I use um, Sony. Uh, it, it was originally made by Sony uh, <laughs> Studio 13. Yeah, 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 yeah. 13. Oh, uh, I really am pleased with it. It's it's does everything I want to do, and I can't remember the full name. Do you remember the full name, Stan? Uh, uh, Sony uh, Movie Platinum. Studio 13. Platinum 13. Yeah, you Movie that, Studio. Uh, Sony, actually it's bought out by Magic, and now it's owned by Magic, and I don't know what the pack that has. I haven't upgraded to a Magic product, but I'm really pleased with it. Yes? Uh, How come you're not using a video camera rather than a, than a uh, single reflex lens camera? Um, I did. I do. Uh, many, of my, many of my videos have been shot on a Canon uh, G... 30, Canon G30, which is a high-end consumer camera and a super, super low-end pro camera. And a lot of my videos were shot on that. Uh, because it, when it was, that was an, well, it wasn't a terribly expensive camera. It was $1,200. And man, you're going to pay that for most DSLRs. You're going to pay more than that for a, G8, a Panasonic GH5. If you buy a, uh, what is the big Canon that's famous now? G80. No, no, that's the uh, T. What's the prefix? D80. Whatever the Canon is, that's really famous and people are using a lot. You're going to pay that uh, because I want. I'll tell you the critical thing that I lost. Well, it, it didn't have a lot of the things I'm talking about. It was a very complicated camera. I was really surprised how complicated it was. Um, but it doesn't go super wide. It had a 26 millimeter lens on it. And this is a 16 millimeter lens, which is a number you don't mean anything to you. So with the lens, the wide angle lens on nearly all camcorders are, would be the equivalent angle of this. <coughs> and the, and I'm, I don't know, I'm just guessing. But the, this has an angle of that. So I'm getting from Stan over here to this mic. Does it bubble? Bubble? Louder Distort? Yeah. yeah, it does distort. At that super wide angle, you're always going to get some distortion. And you'll really see it in the faces. The faces are, uh, because I put them in the corners, I tend to put them on the sides. They distort on the sides. It's just, it's just the inherent nature of a super wide angle. Yeah, they do distort, yes. Um, it's worth it to me because that's the only way to get the shot. Uh, so, yeah, it, it, it does do that. And I can go super long, although the my Canon G30 had a it had a 20x lens on it, and it was, and it went 20. It was a long, long, long lens. But I lost the super wide angle, and I wanted that, and I wanted the interchangeable lenses. You won't get the low light. This camera has very, very good low light. And if you ever, and you, you don't intend to shoot in low light, but sometimes you do. Low lights are an issue to consider. Uh, yeah, I, I have, I have shot a lot on a G30, which is a, a Canon camcorder. It's a good camera. Uh, I think this is better. It's smaller, it's more, it's more easily handled. Uh, uh, this is the camera I recommend. Uh, that G30 was, uh, was, I paid $1,200 for it, and this is far, far better camera, and it's 650. I love the interchangeable lenses, and that's one of the things I recommend. Are we done? Oh, yes, sir. When you're panning the camera, uh, will the sun hit it if you accidentally catch the sun? Will it damage the camera? No, no. Uh, he asked, well, uh, if you actually get the sun in the, uh, in the camera, will that damage it? No. If you hold it there, it will. It sure will. If you hold it at the camera, then you're going to get damaged. But if it just shoots in there and out, and it depends on the length of the lens. If you have a wide angle lens, it's so tiny that it won't, even, you could even hold it on it with a super wide and it wouldn't do any damage. If you have a zoom lens and you point it at the sun, yeah, you'd burn the sensor. You'd, bur you'd burn that image into the sensor. You'd, you'd certainly damage it. So, and most times, quick, quick shot of the cam of the of the sun in the camera is not going to be an issue. Yeah. Have you done any product reviews? Do you need to have any special permissions, <coughs> like from the company that you're reviewing? She asked you if I had done any product reviews, and do you need special permission from the country? No. No, uh, from the company. 
to do a product review. No, not at all. In fact, uh, people, companies are at this point sending me products and wanting to me to do the reviews. And uh, if you've seen any of those, I turn them over to other people and have the other people review them so that there's no possibility of accusations that, oh, you're in it for the money, and oh, every word you're saying is a lie, and so I don't even bother with that. I turn it over to other people who will just tell whether they like it or not. Yes? Um, do you always order your equipment through Amazon, or do you do Best Buy, or...? I, uh, I will buy, it depends, so I would definitely buy this from Amazon. Uh, I did not worry to warn you of this, but I bought the camera, and I bought this microphone from Amazon, but I bought the camera from Best Buy and bought the Geek Squad. Um, you can argue back and forth about Geek Squad, it's worth it to me. All my expensive gear comes from Be uh, Best Buy and I buy the Geek Squad. Yeah. BNHphoto.com, they'll, they'll compete with price and they have the high-end pro to consumer. Yeah, I, I have actually ordered a fair amount from Adorama because of the pro stuff. I've ordered some uh, pro stuff from Adorama, but I buy from Geek Best Squad. I buy my expensive gear from Geek Best Buy for the Geek Squad. I'm not going to get that from B and H or or uh, or Adorama. I'm going to get a third party, and I don't want a third party. I want to go take it to Best Buy, say this is broken, fix it, and walk away. And then three weeks later, it's either fixed or they buy it, give me a brand new one. That's how I want to deal with my expensive gear. Uh, the high pro in the pro gear they don't sell Best Buy, so I have to go somewhere else. And uh, you're never going to get, you're not going to pry Amazon out of my hands for this kind of stuff because I don't care about price. I like the, I love the convenience of Amazon. Man, that guy was brilliant. He created a brilliant model. Go on there and boom, it's coming. It's coming in two days, and I got it. And I love Amazon so much. No, and price isn't an issue. I mean, I don't know what the prices are between them. Little stuff like this always comes from Amazon. All my cards, you know, I uh, before Christmas, like uh, SD cards were really cheap. I got, I think I probably ordered 50 SD cards to last me the year because they were cheap. And on Amazon, and I just, I just love Amazon. And no, it's either Best Buy or Amazon. Well, that's not true. I have bought some pro stuff from from Adorama. I don't know why Adorama instead, but I, I do Adorama. Yes. There's all too many variables to give you an answer. So if I'm making a nature video and I've shot, and I, I will turn my GoPro on and drive for two hours. So now I've got two hours and I'm going to use 15 seconds of it. I've got to watch two hours of video to get 15 seconds. That's going to take a long time. On the other hand, what we shot today probably won't take any time at all. We'll go through and cut out. You'll just pull out the uh, pauses where I'm listening to questions or if, if I'm boring, we'll just cut that out. That one's not going to take much time at all. Uh, four hours on the, on this video right now, maybe. Well, there's a lot of bad, a lot of boring stuff in this one. Maybe more. I don't know. It really is very, really variable on on what's going on. Some almost no time, and some days, especially nature videos where I'm traveling. That's that can be days. Bob, Questions. Bob. On that same vein, when you film a video um, of an inside of a van tour, someone's new van, and you interview them, about how long will you be filming to get a 10-minute video? Too long. She asked how long will I be filming to get a 10-minute video, and my answer is always too long. Uh, be, uh, I don't know. How long? We've, you've been with me and shot a lot of videos. How, how long would we take? 20. 30 minutes? Yeah. Uh, average 30 30 minutes and I'm and I what I if you've noticed I've been trying to get it down to a, uh, a less than 15 minute um, uh, interview and then a less than 15 minute tour and I think these are the one we're shooting now are all going to be a total of 15 minutes so we probably shoot for half an hour it really varies a lot what else yes how do people make money on there's something called monetization. You have to have a certain amount of traffic, and I don't even know what it is anymore. Uh, once you reach a certain level of, of uh, views and watch time, you can monetize a video. And if you watch them, you'll see that uh, um, YouTube will put an ad on it, and somebody paid for that ad, and YouTube will give you the, a percentage, and they'll take a percentage, and that's how you make money on it. Uh, so they're making it harder. You know, everybody and their uncle wants to make a video on YouTube, and I think that might be why they're having so much problems with uh, with 
the subscribers, you know, with the demonetizations and all that, is that people are going for shock value and they're just coming up, they're barely making the qualifications, they're going for shock value and that's driving away their, I don't know, I'm just wildly guessing, that, but I would, that would be my guess, why they're making it so much harder to monetize a video. Just a wild guess. Anyone else? Are we done? Do you have any control of what ads go on your thing? Not that I know of. Uh, I've not tried or been able to, and I don't think you do, no. But maybe you do, and I just haven't found it. I'm no expert on YouTube at all. I just make videos of I'm a guy who talks too much, that's all. I love what I do and I talk too much. That's all I am. Yeah. Uh, so the, do they automatically put the ads on there, or do you have to like research and then contact YouTube and say, hey, do I have enough views on here? Can I start monetizing? I have. He, the question was, uh, will they just automatically start monetizing, uh, and or do you have to do something? And I have no idea. Oh, a little bit about free music. Uh, just I'll get yes one more. Uh, a, little, a lot of discussion earlier about music. The, the, there's two pieces of music on uh, on every one of my videos. I don't do music because I'm I don't have that ear. I don't know. I can't make it work good. When music works good on a video, it's stunning, and I just don't I don't have it. Whatever it takes. Do yeah. you know if singing along to the radio is considered fair use? <laughs> yeah, I think it is actually. I'm not a lawyer, so don't quote me I, on that. I was just curious. Since you... Yeah, because it's on. Yeah. Maybe partial song, not the whole length. It actually doesn't matter if it's okay. the whole song. It just it really matters whether or not it's it's like sort of accidentally on or serendipitously on. Mike. Yeah, sorry. Uh, it matters if it's sort of act like if you. I think if if you shot a video where you went and hit the play button and it started playing a Beatles song, that might not be okay. Um, so you don't want to show that you sort of started the music. Um, but as long as it's sort of on by accident or on the background or on serendipitously, then you're you're pretty much fine. Um, and I mean, if it's a unless you have a million viewers, they're probably not going to come after you. Um, so you should be okay until you hit the big time, like Bob. <laughs> <laughs> Like, say if I was to do a video about where to camp, can I use Google Maps? Is that copyright infringement? Or, you know? Um, I don't think it is. Because I actually recently just watched a movie where there's a, a big sequence, or a lot of the movie is him sort of pushing through Google Maps images. Um, so I think they're okay with that. And they tend to have a watermark on the uh, on you know, on their imagery, so even if you know if you have it up there, it's pretty clear that it, you know that it's a Google Map, and I feel like they probably would be satisfied with that. Yeah. So would it be um, right to assume then? I know that with music, you have royalty free or not, you have to give the um, you know the you have to reference it or show give credit whatever. But so I guess on Google Maps, if you use something like that. If you have a reference in in your comments that you use Google Maps, like the maps were from Google Maps, would that cover you? I think so. Um, it, it's funny you bring that up. There's actually a, a thing called Creative Commons, mm -hmm. um, and that's sort of a set of regulations that was invented for media that's on the internet. Um, and it's basically a set of rules. So there, there'll be a set of symbols next to stuff. A lot of times, like if you go on Flickr and you see photos. Um, they can be Creative Commons license, and it'll say, um, you can use this, but you have to give me attribution, or you can use this, but you have to give me attribution, and you can't make money off of it. Um, so a lot of media will have that actually on it, um, just on the bottom of the page, there's a little symbol. Um, and if you Google Creative Commons license, um, you can get a map. There's like four different symbols, and once you know what they mean, they're pretty easy to sort of see. Um, but yeah, a good rule of thumb is just to give, if you're not sure, just accredit them, because um, that's usually all people want. Okay, so if you monetize a video and you've used royalty-free music, does that mean you can't monetize your video? Uh, no, because it's, it's okay. royalty-free. You don't have to pay them money for using it. Um, okay. They might have a license on it where they say, it might say, you can use this, but you can't make money off of it, in which case you can't. Okay. Um, but if you email them, they'll probably be fine with it. It's okay. basically just, if you're not sure, attribute them or contact them. Okay. Well, if that's it. I think yeah. The one thing that we would emphasize above all is is, is sound when it comes to shooting video. It's it's uh, yeah. If you've got the wind cutting through your video or whatever it is, muffled sound, people are gonna stop watching it immediately, and, and that's pretty much the end of the story. So yeah, when it comes to video, sound is sound is king. So as you guys go out and, and shoot your stuff, think about that. I think above all, you make great great videos. Have fun. Okay. Thank you guys. Very much.